What's up everybody, Serenity here and today I'm bringing you my bandit guide. So let's get into it. As per usual, I'm gonna start with the loadout. So you have the MP7 and then you have the M870 shotgun. Now I run the MP7 because it's more flexible than the shotgun, but the shotgun is not that bad. I would recommend using a reflex sight if you don't know the maps really well, but if you have a lot of map knowledge and you know where the flanks are and what to listen to, I would recommend using the ACOG sight as you can get a lot of headshots from long range with it. You have a big choice concerning the barrel attachments as they are all viable. So you have the compensator that helps the recoil a little bit better than the flash hider. The flash hider is great because it has good recoil and it helps you stay hidden when shooting through smoke grenades. The silencer would also be a good choice because you're going to be roaming a lot when playing bandit and so getting headshots won't be that big of a deal and the silencer will help you to stay hidden. I've tried all three, I prefer the flash hider but I really like the compensator as well. I would not recommend a laser sight because you're going to be flanking a lot and giving your position away is just not worth it. You only have one pistol, it's the P12, and I really like it. It has a lot of bullets and it hits pretty hard. In the gadget category, you have the nitro cells and the barbed wire. I would recommend to always go with the nitro cell. It just has way too much potential to be ignored. Some people think the barbed wire is a good choice because you can put a battery on it and you can stop drones, but honestly, I would recommend asking for someone else to put barbed wire down because that way your team has an additional nitro cell, which is a lot more important than a deployable shield. And to finish off the loadout, you have low armor and high speed, making you a very good roamer slash flanker. Bandit's special ability is the batteries. Using them, you can electrify barbed wire, deployable shields, and of course reinforcement walls, making it impossible to breach for thermite. Of course, Thatcher and Twitch can take the batteries out pretty easily, but there's a trick you can do as Bandit to counter that. Here's the trick. You don't put the batteries down at first, and you wait for thermite to put the breaching charge on. While he's doing that, you can hear him and put the battery on the right wall. If done correctly, it's going to destroy the charge, even though it's active. Now, this trick is very powerful, and it wins rounds, so basically the theory behind it is that Thatcher's EMP grenades cannot destroy the batteries as long as they're not active, and the batteries take very little time to destroy the breaching charges once they're active, making it very hard for the enemy Thatcher to destroy the battery since his timing window is very small. The way the enemy Thatcher should play it out is throw all three grenades on that one wall. If he doesn't do that, it's nearly impossible to stop Bandit from destroying the charge. What I would recommend is having someone shoot their gun non-stop while the Thermite is placing the charge. That way Bandit won't know which wall the charge was put on, so he's gonna have to gamble while this is happening, make sure to use all three EMP grenades for maximum chances of this to work. Now that you understand how this trick works, let's see it in action. Alright, here I'm gonna boost the volume so that you can hear Thermite placing the charge. As you can see, that was pretty easy. Now let's do that again with Thatcher throwing all three EMP grenades. Alright, throw throw both of them when I say so. Alright, go, 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 go. Now, Thatcher ran out of EMP grenades, but my friend is still gonna put his other charge for practice purposes. Just to be clear, I didn't tell him what wall to put it on. I can just hear it. Here's what to do as Thatcher, and as you can see, it's pretty hard to get that timing down. The reason this trick is so powerful is that, firstly, there's no simple answer to it, and secondly, if you take out both breaching charges that Thermite has, the enemy team cannot breach through any reinforcement walls for the rest of the round, and that is a huge deal. For example, on the map House in Garage, uh, if you take both breaching charges, you can focus the firepower of your entire team in the stairs, because that's the only way they can come from now, and quite honestly, if you get to that stage, you basically won the round. I personally love this aspect of the game, because it pushes the skeleton cap even higher by turning something that's very simple into something that requires a lot of time and practice to master. I don't know if Ubisoft likes this, but you know, if they don't and they're planning on making this impossible, don't worry, I'll be talking about roaming as Bandit. Alright, so as you can see, Bandit can be a very good defender because of the battery trick. Now, I'd like to talk about another way you can play Bandit, and that is roaming. Bandit is in a way just like Jaeger, he has high mobility and a passive special ability, making him a very good roamer. That being said, the guns are very different, the 416 is a very flexible 
of a weapon, the MP7 is not. You will struggle a lot shooting people at long range with the MP7 if you don't have an ACOG on it, and you will sometimes even have trouble shooting people at medium range. So you know, like getting in a good position, flanking the enemy, getting the drop on them, that's the easy part. The hard part is to win those gunfights. However, unlike Jaeger, you do have the Nitro Cell giving you the ability to deal with shields, which is a big deal because since you have high mobility, you will get yourself in trouble a lot. Having the Nitro Cell will save you from a lot of these bad situations. The Nitro Cell is also very good when you catch a big pack of enemies from behind because that way you won't have to rely on the MP7. Now, that happens really rarely, but when it does happen, it makes for an epic moment. Choosing between roaming and doing the battery trick is 100% map dependent. If you're playing on the map where you absolutely need to keep that front door shut, for example, house and consulate, then I would recommend doing the battery trick. If you're playing on a map where it's not that big of a deal, for example, clubhouse and Oregon, I would recommend roaming. Also, I would recommend doing both playstyles when it's possible. What I mean by that is, if you know that Thermite doesn't have any breaching charges left or he just simply died, you should switch playstyle in the middle of the round because you have a lot of potential as a roamer, not so much as a defender. I would like to say that Bandit pairs very well with Jaeger because Jaeger has a long range weapon, Bandit has a short one, and you know, you can set up some really nice flank and crossfires when two roamers are working together. So if you could get your friend to play Jaeger while you're playing Bandit and create some nice synergy, you will quickly become a very powerful duo. Alright guys, I covered everything I wanted to talk about. So in conclusion, Bandit can be played in two very different ways. He can be played as a defender by doing the battery trick, which will take a lot of practice to master, so don't hesitate to practice in custom games. The other playstyle you can adapt is roaming, since you have high mobility, a passive special ability, and of course the nitro cell. Deciding which playstyle to choose depends heavily on the map and the position. And don't forget that if you have a battle buddy, tell him to start playing Jaeger and see the bandit Jaeger combo potential for yourself. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. The next video will probably be the 10k special, in which I'll answer questions from you guys. If you have a question, it's not too late yet, just post it in the comments and I'll probably get to it. So yeah, make sure to stay tuned for that, and as per usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. The fun thing about Fuse is that he could possibly do all of that with a bad gun, but that's just not the case, he has an amazing gun. He can easily do all of that and do a lot of killing. Honestly, I didn't really like the AK-12 at first, but now that I got used to it, I don't know why, but I'm racking headshots every single game. I don't know if it's the recoil pattern or the reflex sight, but I'm doing better with this gun than any other gun in the game. I would like to add that the toxic gas canisters grow in importance the more the time goes down, because slowing the enemy's push with, say, 3 minutes left on the clock is almost almost meaningless, but slowing the enemy's push at like 30 seconds left however is a huge deal since the enemy team will have to create a new strategy on the fly, and obviously that strategy won't be optimal at all.